coming up next on Keys to Kingdom Living. Concerning faith. In other words, they preach the truth, but, but what Paul means there is when they preach the truth and they give their interpretation of it, the word cannot support their interpretation. Because they don't know the spirit of truth. You ever heard somebody like that? They'll read the word and then when they start uh, expounding on the word, it's like, that had nothing to do with what you just read. It's because their, in, their interpretation does not line up with the word of God. And we've got people standing behind pulpits and congregations that are flooding into these churches. They, 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 they bring the word of God out usually as a text and that's it and then close it and go home. And then they spend 35, 40 minutes expounding on things that are not supported by the word. And gullible people fall prey to that because they come to church to learn about God. But the Bible says work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. They're going to stand on the judgment day and give an account for leading people astray, but you're going to stand before the same judgment seat if you're not saved and give an account for why you didn't want to uh, study to show yourself approved. Amen. Paul warns us about following ministers who may preach the word of God, but their judgment or opinions aren't supported by that word. They twist the word to fit their wicked ways and to hide sin that is in their lives. Paul goes on to tell the believers of his time that they knew his doctrine. Read on. <clears throat> but you have carefully, verse 10, but you have carefully followed my doctrine. Do you see that? That's the gospel according to Paul's what he's talking about, where he got off the word and he expounded on things. He said, that's my doctrine. You have known and followed my manner of life. Right? Purpose, my faith, my long-suffering, my love, and my perseverance. You've seen me in my afflictions and my persecutions, which happened to me at Antioch and uh, Iconium at Lystra. What persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord has delivered me. See, he's given his credentials that shows that he is a true apostle. Not like some of these fruits, flakes, and nuts that blows in, blows up, and blows out. Right? He says, you've seen me. I've worked with you. I've lived with you. You've seen my doctrine that it is true. It does hold up. Ministers today have lifestyles that don't line up with God's word, and neither do their doctrines. We're living in a time that Jesus and Paul both warned us about. Men are lovers of themselves more than God and are deceiving God's people and leading them astray. Turn with me to 2 Peter chapter 3. I'm giving you a foundation for where I'm coming from this morning so you can see it. Let every truth be established in the mouths of two or three witnesses. We've got Jesus, we've got Paul, and here's Peter. I don't know where Mary's at. <coughs> that was an old joke. 2 Peter 3, began with verse 1. Beloved, I now write to you this second epistle, in both of which I stir up your pure minds by way of reminder, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, knowing what first? That scoffers will come when? In the last days, according to their own what? Wait, isn't that what Paul just said there in Timothy? They're doing it according to their lust, not the leading of the Holy Spirit. These scoffers will come in the last days. What are they going to do? Saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. And they, for this, they willfully forget. Wow. Where's the promise of his coming? We've been waiting around. The people used to preach it are dead. We still waiting around? They're scoffing. I looked up the word scoff. It means to be a false teacher. Someone who jeers or scoffs at the word of God, even though they profess to be ministers of the word of God, but they are driven by their own evil lust and not led by the Holy Spirit, according to what Peter has said and what Paul said earlier. 
Today, hundreds of churches in 26 states are inviting Muslim leaders and are reading the Koran during their worship service. The very same God that commands us to love our enemies and pray for those who perse uh, persecute us and despitefully use us also commands us not to have any other gods before him. Now, the world hates us. In case you hadn't heard the, MO, I mean, the email yet. Jesus said they will hate you without a cause because you love me, right? If you were of the world, the world would love you. So, so whenever Christianity tries to spread into an area where there is a religion such as Hinduism, Buddhism, and all those other isms, they, they try to kill the Christian missionaries and preachers that are going in and infiltrating their region, right? Why? Because they hate us. So what the religions of the world try to do to stop the spread of, of Christianity and converts to Christ and to become children of God, to stop that, they try to intimidate with death those who minister the gospel, right? Now for some, that don't work. They say, I'll preach it if you kill me. Now in America, they have a different approach because we don't allow people to kill people. Christianity is what this nation was founded on. So, so, so you don't have the stronghold against Christianity in America like you do in others. So what they've tried to do to stamp out Christianity in our own nation is to uh, shame us. Well, you know, you Christians are elitist. You think you're the only ones going to heaven. No, we don't think. We know. See, even that was an elitist statement. Arrogant, prideful, and all that good stuff. They want to shame us into backing off from the faith, faith and preaching the truth. Because the truth, although you know the truth and the truth sets you free, when you don't want to know the truth, it offends people. And so they will put it in there in the same category as hate language, hate speech. And so they're trying to use this, political correctness is trying to use this to shut down and shame the church in America. We've got to be careful of this. Because now, watch. Jesus said, love your neighbor, did he not? But he did not say, bring their gods in there with them. He did not give place for us to bring Muhammad in here and set him beside Jesus. I wanted, to, uh, I wanted to have a little shrine here and put Jesus right there in the middle of it with Buddha, his naked head, and those other guys. And say, all right, we're going to worship all these guys. That's what people are doing right now. Why? Because they don't want to be seen as intolerant. Now, here's the problem. Things can't happen in America like they happen in third world countries because we have systems in place. We have structure in place. When God came on the scene in Genesis 1, he said, let there be light. When he got light, he says, now I can see what's going on. After he got light in the situation, he started separating stuff. There was disorder, there was calamity, and there was destruction because the earth was covered with water. It was so covered with water that the water stood high. And he took a firmament, heaven, and he separated the waters from above the firmament and below the firmament, firmament so that the waters on the earth could then be brought back and dry land could appear. Then after he says, all right, let the waters on the earth go back and let dry land appear, then he started speaking life into the earth and it started bringing forth things, right? So he came in there in a place of chaos and darkness and he spoke structure, and when there was structure in the house, there was life on the planet. Now, we have life in America. We have blessings in America. We can do just about anything you want to do, anything you want to imagine. You can do it. You have the freedom. You have the, the resources. You have the intellect in America. You can go to the universities and say, I'm thinking about this idea and hire a team and they will help you put your dream into reality and send people to the moon. You are limitless in America to do whatever you want to, all because we have acknowledged God that he is Lord. Now watch. 
Because we have done this over the 240 or whatever years we've been a nation, it has put structure in America and we built everything according to the structure of God's word until this last generation. When we started pulling away from America, now we have systems set up in America that protects us and allows us to live in safety and live our lives in abundance while in America. Now here's the problem with what you're hearing come out of media, come out of even Christian television now, that is taking away the truth of God's word whenever we say we are intolerant to Muslims and we're intolerant to other religions and other peoples of faith. What we are doing is saying the truth is no longer relevant. The truth that brought structure in America and allowed systems to where we could live in peace because the God who watches over us neither slumbers nor sleep. He will watch over us and keep us in perfect peace as long as our minds stayed up on him. Now, here's what happens whenever people are shamed who are in a place of authority. When wicked men are in power, the people mourn. When the righteous are in power, the people rejoice. All right? So we've had some rejoicing. Ever since World War II... America has been on the upswing. I mean, our, our fathers paid a heavy price for us to have a land of the free and the home of the brave. And watch this. Because the political correctness is getting the ear of people in authority that are Christians and are moral people, and they're letting this, this spirit of tolerance sell them out to where they start compromising we can't do this. Now, I told you I am not here to pick up on some offense, but I've got to show you what's going on right now. Jack Van Empey preached a message exposing some things that are going on under the radar. When he named names on TBN, TBN caught the first one, watched it, and shut him down on the second and censored it. Now, wait a minute. He pays for that airtime, and I believe the last time I looked, we have a right to speak Amen. in America. Amen. They're pulling the right for him to preach as a, I don't care if he's right or wrong, he paid for that airtime. I'm telling you, the systems are, are decaying because men won't have a backbone to stand up to this fair and say, as for me and my house, we're going to serve God. We love them, but we don't agree with them. Parents, you love your, your kids? How many of y'all agree with them? Kids, you love your parents? I don't see a hand up yet. Do y'all agree with your parents? See, we can love each other, but we ain't going to agree with each other. We ain't bringing Muslims in here and say, all right, you read the Koran. We're going to give you equal, equal opportunity and equal access to defile the minds of, of people. All that does is breed corruption. It, 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 it's confusion, and, and God is not the author of confusions, I believe is what the word says. And so, as each, now there's, Lance Wallnow does excellent teaching on the seven mountains, entertainment, education, government, worship, and, and he lists all of them. I'm not preaching his sermon. I want to bring him this point up. As each mountain represents systems that cause America to be supported and to allow us to flourish as citizens of America, which is our right, as these systems are infiltrated by this political uh, ideology of correctness to please man and not to offend anybody that's outside the faith of Christ, as we do that, we are letting down the walls that help keep this nation going. Now, I don't have a, a problem in the world outside this church of going and sitting down on a panel and debating theology with any religion. I don't. 
because Moses went in there with Pharaoh and he said, I'm going to debate with your spirit of religion called magicians. Now, y'all bring out y'all's arguments. They threw down the rod and they turned into serpents. And, and, Aaron, and Moses says, all right, Aaron, throw down your rod. Let's, let's hear your debate. So he threw his debate down and it ate up all, the Mos- all of the magicians' rod serpents. See, see when, when the showdown comes to it and there's a debate, a true debate, an honest debate, then, then people are going to see the truth that it is the truth. So I'm not opposed to having a debate. I am opposed to bringing other faiths, other religions in here and comparing it even close to the relationship that is found in Jesus Christ. Now that brings judgment. Turn with me to Exodus 20. We are seeing, when you see so many churches in America allowing the presentation of the Muslim faith, the the Judaism faith, when you allow this to come into the house of God, we are seeing with our own eyes a return to the days of Elijah in which Ahab, the king of Israel, and Jezebel, his wife, opened up Israel to Baal prophets and Baal worship. The worship of Baal, listen to me, the worship of Baal caused a drought in Israel for 42 months, and at the end of that drought, there was a showdown on Mount Carmel. Now listen, Exodus 20, verse 1. You don't do stuff like this and think God don't see it. This, you're going into the house of God. See, now I said a while ago, I ain't going to debate them in here. If I'm going to debate them, I'm going to debate them out there in their turf. Exodus 20, verse 1. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. He said that. He said how many? None. Before me. And you shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth, you shall not bow down to them nor serve them. Hmm, imagine that. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the, the iniquities of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations to those who hate me. But look what happens to those who love him. But showing mercy to thousands to those who love me And keep my commandments. Now, it's not that we don't want to agree with them for the sake of not agreeing just because we don't like them. We don't agree with them because God don't agree with them. And without faith, without agreement, you can't please God. So we got to agree with what God says. Now, get this. You know, Elijah had a good day on Mount Carmel. In the spirit. I mean, he took authority over all the enemies of God, the, the 850 false prophets and prophets of Baal, did he not? And when he got done with that, <clears throat> Jezebel sends somebody and says, I'm going to kill you. I got thinking about that. You know, when you agree with God, and through God's power, you see your enemies destroyed. You're the one who becomes the culprit. And he's like, all right, God, I just did your service. Now I'm on the top ten most wanted. It's like, when you obey God, and you do, you speak truth, like I'm doing today, it sets you at odds with the God of this world and the rulers of this age who don't like for the truth to go out because when people know the truth, the truth sets them free. And he wants to hold them in bondage like uh, Pastor Greg was talking about. And, and we've got to come out from under that bondage. Now, some people may think this is a game, but your souls are at stake. He said, don't bow down to them. Don't give them place. Don't do it. It's one thing for the church in America to commit sins, and we've done plenty of that in morality, right? 
But when churches in America turn the sacred altar of God into a service of idolatry and tell their followers to join in and participate, we have just crossed a line in this, America, in this nation that we've never crossed before, and it will have serious ramifications. How do I know that? Read the Word. Doesn't it say in Romans 9 and 10 that, that God gave Israel as an example of what not to do? Doesn't it? What happened when Israel went after idolatry? Did God bless them and get a warm, fuzzy feeling with them? No. He punished them. He says, you are blessed, and you're blessed to be a blessing. But if you go after other gods, you are cursed. How much more cursing can America stand before it disintegrates? Somebody needs to wake up. Why would so-called ministers want to desecrate the house of the living God in such a manner? They are poking their finger in the eye of God with their own wickedness. What would cause these ministers to want to tempt God with such a horrific abomination? What? Their hearts are filled with wickedness and deceit. Turn with me to 1 Kings verse, uh, chapter 8. First Kings eight. It just shows how far this nation has gotten away from God. Because when when the spirit goes out of a man and it comes back and finds it swept, garnished and clean and empty. It goes find seven more wicked demons than itself and comes back and enters that man. And the latter end of that man is, is worse than the former state of that. Well, when a nation who is sold out to God turns away from God and slides away from the principles of God, guess what? That spirit that once had people? I don't know. Let's see. Didn't we used to have a problem with slavery? Well, what's going to happen if, if we get away from God? People are going to go back into bondage. Nah. We're too civilized for that. We're too politically correct to ever put anybody back into bondage. Well, let me ask you this question, please. Didn't the, the boys there in John 8 tell Jesus, Jews, say, we've never been in bondage to no one. How can you say we will be made free? I guess they forgot about that 70-year stint in Babylon. The 430 years in Egypt. And Jesus said, he who is a slave to sin are slaves. They're in bondage. We are selling ourselves into bondage because of the lust of sin. Are you there in Kings 8? Is this okay? Verse 56. Blessed be the Lord, who has given rest to his people Israel according to all he promised. Now, now I like this scripture a lot. Because when Moses got the revelation of the tabernacle, they put it up in tents like daddy used to do. And they take that tent and they move to somewhere else. Remember that, Paul? And, 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 and David got this revelation. I want to build the temple. I want to put him a permanent place. David had a little problem with adultery and murder. So God says, no, you're not going to build it. But your son will. And so King Solomon builds the temple of God. And, and when he gets that temple built, he says, blessed be the Lord who has given rest to his people. They found the place. God. There has not failed one word of all his good promise which he promised through his servant Moses. May the Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers. May he not leave us nor forsake us, that he may incline our, uh, our hearts, that he may incline our hearts to himself, to walk in his ways, to what? Walk in his ways, to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, which he commanded our fathers. And may these words of mine, which, with which I have made supplication before the Lord, be near the Lord our God day and night, and he may maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel, 
as each day may require, that all the peoples of the earth may know that the Lord is God. And there is what? No other. Let your heart therefore be loyal to the Lord to walk in his statutes, his commandments, as at this day. Now, do you think it's a coincidence that he wrote verse 61 right after verse 60? I think not. He says, let all the people know on the earth that the Lord is God and there is no other. Therefore, let your heart be loyal to the Lord our God and obey our God. Isn't that special? After King Solomon declares the Lord, of, the Lord of Israel is God, and beside him there is no other, he goes on to say, Let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord our God, and to walk in his statutes, keep his commandments as it is to this day. You see, when you regard the God of the Bible as Lord, then you must also regard his command to live a holy and devout life before him. Now, why would ministers want to stray from Jesus being the only way, the truth, and the life, and God is the only God? Why would they want to do that? Because they're not wanting to live a holy life, and they're led astray by their own lust. That's it. They're selling out America's blessings because of their lust. I think Esau did that. I think Adam did that. Sold what would have been his rule and reign for a piece of fruit. And God put him in charge. <laughs> a piece of fruit. Couldn't you at least got a car out of the deal? <laughs> Isaiah 43.10. Before I make somebody mad. says in Isaiah 43.10, You are my witnesses, says the Lord. So who's speaking here? The Lord. And my servant, who I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, nor shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior. I find that interesting that he's talking about Lord and God, and then he ends up saying there is no Savior. I have declared and saved, I have proclaimed, and there was no foreign God among you. Therefore you are my witnesses, says Lord, that I am God. Indeed, before the day was, I am he, and there is no one who can deliver out of my hand our work and who will reverse it. Our God is Lord, and beside him there is no other. We need to worship the Lord and ask him for mercy and not judgment on our country. Stand to your feet. For 2,000 years, people have wrestled with who he is. Embark on a journey with Pastor Asa Dockery in his new book, The Greatest Revelation, to find out more about the true identity of Jesus. Order online now at whcnorth.org. When you sow into this ministry with a gift of $50 or more, Pastor Asa wants to give you his latest audio series entitled Discipleship 101, Making Disciples of All Nations, and as a bonus, his latest book, The Greatest Revelation. Can't seem to find time to get into God's Word? Need an encouraging word at the right moment? Pastor Asa's daily devotions are available on our website at whcnorth.org. Use the Devotions tab and simply add your email address in the box provided or download the app for your smartphone. We pray that you've been impacted by today's message. If you need more information or would like to contact us, visit us on our website at whcnorth.org or contact us by phone at 706-374-6175. 
To write us, our address is P.O. Box 968, Morganton, Georgia, 30560. Our campus is located at 135 Bud Franklin Drive, Blairsville, Georgia, 30512. 